Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic Hypersonic. I'm Barry P. Cook. Let's talk about the season six finale of DC's Legends of Tomorrow, which was called The Fungus Among Us. <laughs> oh, Lord, this show. Okay, so it starts off where the previous episode left off, which was Mick running into the, I guess, med bay to grab one egg that I guess fell out of the container as they were taking the eggs out of the room and an explosion goes off so he gets blown up real good saving that last egg but he does save it and he it turns out to be fine meanwhile his girlfriend's ship is stolen by bishop and the wave rider is offline for some reason which stranded the legends in 1925 odessa zarian astra break the news of john's death to the rest of the team but it seems like he became a mushroom when he died. Very strange show. Meanwhile, Spooner is unwell because of the shenanigans from last episode after being hurt during it. Mick tells his girlfriend he's determined to be in the baby's lives, which she's surprised by but happy about. A few aliens show up and attack Sarah, Ava, and Nick, but they get defeated just as they call in their fellow aliens. The legends realize they need to keep the fountain from dying to prevent a cataclysmic invasion. B thinks John is actually in the mushroom, that he's not dead, and he didn't just become a mushroom, he's like in there. And he tells Zari, but she isn't really interested in retrieving him. Gideon ends up getting repaired, and a video of Bishop plays, which reveals that his plan is to kill everyone but himself and Sarah, because he has this weird idea that he could rebuild humanity or whatever with the two of them. I don't know, very strange. The legends visit Bishop in the past before he became evil to get his help saving the fountain, and the outfit he's wearing was pretty cool. In a very Alice in Wonderland type moment, B says that they have to eat the John Mushroom in order for him to be able to communicate with everybody. Sarah ends up hearing John's voice actually call out to her saying, eat me, which she does, and ends up going on a bit of a vision quest during which she actually sees John. He explains that he regrets his behavior earlier and that he's going to feed the fountain with his remaining life force to sustain it as long as possible because it's protecting the earth, even though it doesn't deem humanity worthy of its help anymore. Before whispering to Sarah, the most important thing he's learned in life, which is that everyone is all connected, which is kind of lame, but that's what he says, I guess. Spooner comes out of her illness and confirms that the fountain has totally forsaken humanity. Sarah and Ava decide to get married immediately before the invasion starts. Spooner sends her mom away so that she'll be safe. Gary helps Ava realize that she doesn't need to write perfect vows and is asked to walk her down the aisle, which is pretty cool. The next thing we see is the ceremony actually being held with Nick as the officiant and musical accompaniment by B. Of course, both brides look amazing. The next thing you know though is Bishop crashes the ceremony in Mick's girlfriend's ship and the aliens attack. The legends barricade themselves in Spooner's mother's ranch when they see the overwhelming numbers that the aliens arrived with. And I had a question at that point, which was, doesn't the Wave Rider have weapons? Like, wouldn't they just get on the Wave Rider and blast them all? I don't know. Blast the ship out of the sky? Blast the aliens on the ground? It was a little weird to me that they didn't do that. When B is attacked, Sarah tries to hack off his hands so that the virus won't spread and kill him, but Spooner zaps the two of them, Sarah and B, with, I guess, Sarah's regenerative ability. I don't know how that worked, but she does it. Spooner then zaps each of the legends in turn to give them each other's powers whenever one of them needs it during the rest of the battle. So I guess she's kind of acting like a rogue type of thing from the Marvel, where you, she can absorb their powers and then, I don't know, in this case, distribute it. I, it's very strange. I, don't, I think I knew when I was watching it how that made sense, but now I've forgotten. But anyway, that's what happens. Then Nick administers the final vows to Sarah and Ava, right in the middle of this attack in, the, in, in, in battle that they're in, inside the cabin. And he pronounces them married, at which point they kiss, and somehow Sarah sends a wave of mushroom power out to Ava that apparently she got from 
eating John, which she then amplified by spreading it through Ava and the rest of the legends, and it zaps all the aliens away. Again, it made more sense when I was watching it. I, I'm reading it back. I'm like, what? <laughs> but that's what happens. Bishop then tries to take on the legends himself as the alien babies hatch. They attack him and eat him because I guess gestation makes you hungry. Past Bishop gets sent back to his own time after having his memory wiped. As Zara goes to the site of the fountain and tries to communicate with John and finds that the fountain has unbound him from it and returned him to life after, I guess, transferring his soul to the ownership of a demon, which John says was something that was the case before. His soul was under the control of a demon. I don't remember what that's about. But anyway, he then tells her that he's going to go off on his own, but he gives her a key, but doesn't tell him the purpose of the key. Nick and Sarah have a moment while Mick explains that he's going to go off with his girlfriend, to which her response is that he will always have a home on the Wave Rider with the legends, which she tells him as she hands him the bridal bouquet and tells him that he's next. Just as the legends are about to board the Wave Rider and go off on their next adventure or whatever, a little ship that looks a lot like the jump ship swoops in and blows the Wave Rider to smithereens before flying off, stranding the legends in 1925, and that's how the episode ends. So, yeah, <laughs> a lot of crazy stuff happened. The cool takeaways are that Sarah and Ava are married. We know that Mick is going to go away, but will probably come back. And the best thing is that John got a much better ending than I originally thought his ending was going to be permanently, which is the ending he got in the previous episode. I didn't really like the whole mushroom thing. <laughs> but the end result is that John is John again and alive and in a right state of mind. And I'm sorry that he won't be with the legends anymore, but at least they didn't leave the character dead and absorbed by the ground and having gone out like a punk and having gone out as kind of a bad guy. That would have been a really a real bummer if, they, if they'd left it there, but they didn't. So I was glad for that. It'll be interesting to see his character next season, which I guess is gonna show up in 1925 Odessa because I'm, I suspect they're gonna bring him in rather early. And based on his character bio, he's from that era. So that's probably what's gonna happen. It'll be fun to see where they, how they get another ship, uh, get out of the 20s. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I may or may not review season seven. I didn't review season five because I didn't have a channel at that point in time. So when season six came on, I said, okay, let's, I'll make this part of the channel. I'll review season six, but a lot of the episodes were so bad that I just, they're not worthy of review that you just, they're not worthy of talking about. So I only did it because I started and I didn't want to not finish. So I don't know. I may or may not review season seven, but that's where we're at. So I'm going to take off. I'll be back with other content ASAP. Until then, peace and long life.